Battle the Ghost Rider Show, rated E for everyone. Incredible. 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 You're listening to Battle the Ghost Rider Show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's podcast. Thank you for tuning in. God knows I know you have options. Hey, uh, feeling a little bit better. I mean, I listened to yesterday's podcast, and boy, I had that cough. Sounded like some dog was dying. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I still have the cough. I'm still getting, trying to shake this off. You know, it's been one of the worst cases of the flu. Just can't seem to shake this off. I mean, it's like, it's hard. <clears throat> there it is, see? It refuses to go. Um, anyway, you know, a PSA, real quick. You know how, since children, we are taught that sharing is caring. You know what? Bullcrap. When it comes to the flu, you keep that to yourself. Don't be bringing that to work. Don't be sharing with anyone else. You keep that to yourself because... You know, that's the one time when you're allowed to be a greedy SOB. Keep the bug to yourself. Because then we go into recycling. And although recycling is important, recycling the bug is not a cool thing. I mean, you know, they say if you're not recycling, you're throwing it all away. You know what? The flu bug, I- I'm, I'm okay with throwing it all away. We don't want to recycle it. We don't want you to bring it to work so that some of us can catch it, take it home get a little bit better, then bring it back, relapse, and catch it again. No, that, no, 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 no. That, that, that don't work. So keep it to yourself. This has been a PSA from Pato the Ghost Rider. <coughs> there, sorry. Now, I, I'm feeling a lot better today, a lot better than yesterday. And, um, you know, I just uh, wanted to talk and share, you know, little details, you know, with... We've been talking, it's, it's all been serious. We've been talking about politics, which I, uh, Pato hates politics. Politics, religion, and football. Yeah, foosball is the devil. You know, it's one of those things where you can pretty much get into arguments, lose friendships, and a lot of that crappy stuff. But anyway, uh, so today, let me share with you this little incident. Uh, Chris Rock, comedian. So, we're going to talk about comedians today, but the new Netflix special, I uh, finally watched it. But uh, originally, uh, my intention wasn't to watch it yet. I mean, it, the, what, what happened is, I, uh, I've been feeling sick, so obviously I've been napping a lot, you know, sleeping, trying to, trying to save my strength so that my body can fight this bug, you know? But anyway, I wake up in one of those moments, and... Um, I come to the living room and there's my 10 and 12 year old watching the Chris Rock special. Yeah. So, uh, of course, a couple minutes of listening and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Who put this on? So a 10 year old looks at me all like I did. And I'm like, look, okay, I turned it off. I'm like, you know what? I understand you're used to seeing Chris Rock in the Adam Sandler movies like growing up where the environment is a little bit more controlled and he doesn't crack this type of jokes. But no, you don't watch this kind of stuff, especially without telling me. And quite honestly, you're 10. I'm like, no, you can't be watching this stuff. So, okay, you know, no big deal. He just, he was just happy he didn't get in trouble, you know, but I got to change the password on that because dang, Later on that night, I watched the special. And I'm not going to spoil it if you haven't watched it. I mean, it's pretty funny. I mean, obviously, he uh, very adult material. But now I realize I got to sit down with my 10-year-old to see how much damage he obtained from watching this. You know, uh, seriously. And you know what my biggest fear is? Is that I want to know 
how much that he actually understood. Because, I mean, you know, he talks about, uh, okay, I'm going to spoil this a little bit, but uh, one of his, uh, how to stay together and marry, you know, you got to keep, he's, uh, he uses the F word, but basically, you got to keep having sex and going places, you know, have sex and going places. You got to keep coming and going, coming and going, coming and going. Now, I believe we can get, yeah, well, that, that doesn't affect my PG-13 ratings here. But anyway, all I'm saying is, okay, now. Uh, 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 th that's the type of humor that's going on in this, and I'm thinking, mm. as I'm watching this, obviously, you know, it's funny, it's funny, it's Chris Rock, I mean, funny stuff, right? But uh, I'm, I'm thinking, hmm, I wonder how much of that my 10 and 12 year old captured and understood. Hmm, you know, there's no such thing as innocence nowadays, you know. Uh, he's 10. I mean, pretty soon, I'm going to have to sit down with him and have the talk. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I get into anxiety attacks when I think about stuff like that. Having the talk, you know. I'm seriously, I'm, I'm afraid that I'm going to sit down and I'm going to be, uh, Tebow, now sit down. We're going to have the talk. And, uh, He's going to sit down and be like, all right, Pops, what do you want to know? <laughs> know what I'm saying? I'm afraid. I, it, it's one of those things. I mean, they got the Internet. They got YouTube. And then, of course, I mean, you know, he's like that Chris Rock special. That, that, that could be damaging. I mean, you know. But, I mean, obviously, like I said, you know. When parents have to work, you know, one's working and the other one is dealing with the bug. You know, I nickeled myself up, took a nap, and of course, kids, you know, like like I say, when the cat's not around, the mice come out and play. And it's just one of those crazy things. So, um, yeah, gonna have to find out exactly what's going on with that. Oh, well, that being said, moving on. Uh, one of the things that I've been doing a lot as I've been dealing with the flu is I've been going to YouTube because that's the one place where I can catch my uh, classic comedy heroes, you know. And when I say classic, I'm talking about people like George Carlin, Robin Williams, you know, uh, John Pinay. Um, George Carlin, I mean, the first time I heard his routine on your stuff, you know, talking about how your stuff is stuff, but other people's stuff is crap. So now, get your crap out of there so I can put my stuff there. Now, obviously, he used different language. Part of the ghostwriter, I'm substituting the words now. Uh, I'm not going to explain that all the time, but, you know, so basically, he's just talking about, get your crap out of here so I can put my stuff. And then, you know, how we go places taking our stuff, because that's how we, you know feel at home or it's just funny the first time I heard that I couldn't stop laughing and of course when I watch George Carlin do it even on YouTube I can't help but laugh I mean just the way he delivered it I mean obviously if I had those skills I'd be making a lot more money right but all I'm saying is you know he's one of my comic heroes and I've been watching a lot of that as I've been um, dealing with the flu at home uh, Robin Williams, Robin Williams, uh, the voices, the, the material. Now, Robin Williams, uh, I used to have uh, a record, yes, because I used to scratch around, and you know, nothing like scratching comedians saying the F words and stuff like that, you know, but there, one of this, uh, this was a comic relief record, uh, something that they used to put on, you know, to try to help out the ho homeless, comic relief. I can't remember which volume it was, but I had it in the record, and that's one of the times that I remember listening to uh, Robin Williams do stand-up. And uh, he was talking about this preacher who was saying that if he didn't raise a certain amount of money, God was going to take him away. And the way Robin Williams, I'm going to attempt to do it, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Robin Williams. And yeah, quite honestly, uh, I don't think anybody will be able to replicate that. But, you know, he would be like... Uh, Mocking this preacher like, God will take me away unless I raise a million dollars. 
makes you wonder if God is a large man named Benny going, where's my money, mom? You know, those voices he used to do. Well, obviously, I can't do them. Like I said, if I could do half of that stuff, hell, if I could do one-tenth of that stuff, I'd be making a lot more money, right? But all I'm saying is, the, those, those are one of my comic heroes. I mean, uh, John Penney and uh, the, the, the routine where first time I heard uh, the whole uh, being in the buffet, where Chinese buffet, actually, where the Chinese guy's like, oh, you've been here four hours. You go now. And, you know, it's just funny stuff how that man could take, and all these comic genius could just take regular everyday things we do and talk about and make them funny. John Penney, all about food. But yet, you know, he, he could make it funny. Like, uh, people would say, uh, you know, people eating salad. He said, salad, salad is just a promissory note that more food is on the way. I'm like, you know, it's stuff like that. That I, I, And like I said, I've been dealing with the flu, so I've been YouTubing the heck out of this old comedians and just thinking, when you're feeling down, who is your comedy hero? I mean, you watch stand-up or, I mean, usually comedy is, well, they say laugh, laughter is the best medicine, right? And well, today I feel a lot better than I did yesterday. And if you heard uh, yesterday's podcast, the uh, you know, of course, the material I'm talking about, it's more, obviously, I like to talk about comedy and like to talk about funny things rather rather than talk about politics and everything that's been going on right now because, I mean, that just brings me down. I mean, uh, probably the one funny thing that, I, it's sort of funny and not funny at the same time is I lost a friendship because of Donald Trump. Yeah, my a friend of mine, well, I still consider him a friend. He, I don't know what he considers me and... If my friend, if if throwing away 15 plus years of friendship over political affiliations is that, like I said, well then, I won't even go there. All I'm saying is I still consider him a friend. Uh, but like I said, he, somebody shared with me that uh, video where Donald Trump's hair is flying all over the place. I thought it was funny. Put it on my Facebook page. Uh, apparently he had a problem with that. I don't know. I mean, what the... Uh, heck is going on with these people, but I mean, seriously, I mean, all these years, we, we're we Americans, we make fun of everything, people made fun of Obama, people made fun of George Bush, people made fun of Clinton, I mean, I'm like, why is it that some of these people take it, take it to heart, like, ooh, how dare you say this about Trump, or how dare you laugh because the helicopter blew his hair, I'm like, seriously? All right, well, you know, it is what it is. But, hey, uh, just wanted to share that with you guys, you know, comedy. Uh, you know, if you want to share with me who your comic heroes are, uh, hit me up on my Twitter. D underscore Ghostwriter. You know, G-H-O-S-T-W-R-I-T-E-R. Wow, I can still do a spelling bee. Uh so uh, yeah, hit me up. Let me know, and you know, or yeah, or if you you know what, I don't know how you're listening to this, but uh, you I know you can listen to an iTunes, uh, Google Play, and uh, Spreaker. You know you can if you, if you download the Spreaker app, you can listen to this show and uh, interact because you can leave comments and uh, you know follow me on Spreaker. You know follow and. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, you, you, you got options. And, uh, you know, I, I like to interact with you because, you know, I like this. So, anyway, y'all have a good one. And uh, we'll see ya. Incredible. 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 Incredible.